I'm going to talk on the spirit of lust. That's a very powerful spirit, it's lust. It's all in the pornography, it's all on the Instagram. Naked women, beautiful naked women, handsome naked men for the women. The devil knows what you like, he knows your type, he comes as an angel of light. He's going to come as a she-wolf or a he-wolf. The devil ain't going to come looking like Frankenstein, the demons look like that. I'm talking about the devil himself. Uh, He's not going to come looking like uh, the werewolf. The werewolf is hairy and scary. Frankenstein is green and mean. Uh, zombie. Women don't like Frankenstein and women don't like uh, hairy, scary werewolf. But they love Dracula. I believe Dracula is the worst creature out of all the monsters because he's a leader. He got the black cape, got the deep, barry, white voice. Here I come to suck your blood. Right? Remember Blackula and Dracula? Dracula was the white vampire and Blackula was the black vampire. I come to suck your blood. Women love Dracula. He had the acid. He knew how to put women under hypnosis. He had that charm. Then when he sunk his teeth into the women, they became vampires. Well, that's much like the devil. The devil is psychological. He likes to use the spirit of lust. Now, you may think you're in love, but you're really only lusting after the beauty. Now, God made all women to be beautiful. God made Esther. Now, Queen Vasti had the beauty on the outside, but she did not have the inner beauty. That's why King Hishuas got rid of her, and he got Esther. The name Esther means star. She had the inner beauty and the outer beauty. She was a holy woman of God. Now, many of you may think you are in love with that woman, but you're only in lust. You may think you are in love with that man, but you're only lusting after his muscles and his six-pack. Yes, it looked good, but that's just the physical attraction. Why do you think a lot of women, you know, women ask me, Preacher Warren, I don't understand. I have a handsome man in my life. I don't understand why he's cheating on me. I mean, I satisfy him. I cook for him. And I mean, what's wrong with me? Well, if he's only lusting after your body, oh, yeah, he's going to be lusting after other girls, too, who are just as pretty as you are, because he really do not love you. He doesn't love the inner you. He does not love the inner beauty. He may think he do, but he's only in love with your looks, how pretty you are. So there's other women who are just as pretty as you are. He's going to be lusting. It's lusting. He's lusting after your body. All he wants is just the sex. That's why he flirts with other girls behind your back. I'm just keep it real. Same thing vice versa. She gets married you for your money. Yes, the man has to have money to take care of his wife and children. That's a man's job to take care of his wife and children. But there's times you may lose your money. If she stop being a honey, then she really never love you from the get-go. She just only love you for your money. She's a gold digger who wants to push the trigger. Amen. And she stopped being a honey because now you done lost your money. Then, that's, then that was not really love. She just loved your bank account. She just loved your bank account. But she did not, she did not love you. That's why she hopping from one man to another man who got more money than you. So many of you think you are in love, but you really are just in lust. Difference between lust and love. If a man or a woman wants a one night stand, all they want is sex. Then that's just lust. You see, when a man really loves you, when God gives you a man, he ain't going to be no one night stand man. I know one night stand woman for a man or for a, a, a woman. Come on. He's going to be a lifetime man who will hold your hand. Oh, I like that. Not just having sex for one night and then walk out and now he having sex with another woman or a man. Might go both ways. When someone really loves you, they're going to stick together. Y'all going to stick together. He's going to stick with you through thick and thin unto the end for better or for worse. Vice versa, the same thing. So let's talk about lust. Many of you think you are in love, but you're really in lust. Watch this. James chapter 1 verse 14. Let's get in the Bible. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Mm. Then when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. I heard a lot of men talking about, married men talking about, oh, she made me asleep with her. Well, first of all, you had no business being at that woman's house. She's not your wife. And you coming home late to your wife three o'clock in the morning time with a hickey on your neck. The hickey didn't come from your wife. The hickey came from that woman that you were sleeping with. Now, for you to go to that woman's house and she open the door, all she have is just a towel on and she half naked on her breasts out. 
You already knew she was lusting after you, so obviously lust was already conceived in your heart for that woman already. I else you would never have went to a house and know you were a married man. Look what the Bible said. James chapter 1 verse 14. But every man is tempted. Now we all get tempted. Along we in this world, we're going to be tempted. My spiritual mother told me some years ago, God bless her soul, she's in heaven now. She said, it's not a sin to be tempted. It's a sin when you fall into temptation. Jesus was tempted in all points, such as we are, yet without sin. Now, we all make mistakes. If you fall, get back up. We all going to be tempted. Even, even after you get married, they ain't going to stop the devil for sin and temptation because you're married. But if you love each other, you're not going to be flirting around with other men behind your husband's back. i flirting around with other girls behind your wife's back. Why? Because love will give you the strength to resist temptation, especially if you love Jesus. He'll help you live holy. I felt that right there. So if you go into that woman's house and know you're a married man, oh, come on. Now you flirting around with other men behind your husband's back on the job. Okay, God bless you, man of God. I'm happy to see you, man of God. Awesome, Say something to the folk on YouTube land before you go around the world God by the Lord. God bless everybody. Yes. You know what I mean? Respect the bro. He doing a great thing out here. Street pastor, street warrior. Keep doing your thing. So and you doing a great work too. Yes, Not just me. You a warrior for God too. Yes, sir. I'm going to have you keep preaching the word. I love you, brother. Love you too, bro. Thank you, man of God. Thank God for this man of God right here who brought forth a word around the world. You see, temptation is going to come even when you're married. On the job, you're going to meet handsome men. Let me tell you, I can't watch my wife 24 hours a day. There's a lot of men who find my wife attractive. One man came on the YouTube said, hurry up, hurry up and marry her. <laughs> now, of course, I feel a certain way, but I'm not insecure because I trust my wife. That's why I must be trust in marriage. My wife is very faithful. It's like women, a lot of time they look at me, but she trusts me. See, see I can't stop men for finding my wife attractive. Just as long as they respect her and they know she's a woman of God and my wife is very faithful, like I'm very faithful to her. But if you're one of them insecure men who are very jealous and you're watching your wife 24 hours a day and you got a binocular, binoculars and you're watching her and smothering her, <laughs> that means you're insecure. That means you don't trust your wife. That means you don't trust your husband. You can't watch them 24 hours a day. Some of you are just obsessed. Some of you can't even take having a, a fine woman or a fine man because you're too jealous and too insecure. See, see, see now, you need God to deliver you. Many of you are just are infatuated. You just obsess. Obsess is a lust demon. Remember that movie, Fate of Attraction? That woman was crazy. She was obsessed. Well, that man had no business sleeping with her in the first place because he was already married. Come on. That's going on in real life. When someone is obsessed with you, honey, they smother you. They watch every move you make. It can even turn into killing. Because if they can't have you, they don't want no one else to have you. So that's why it's not good to go into fornication. I get on the Instagram and showing breast and everything hanging out because someone may stalk you. So be careful. Now look what the Bible declares. James chapter 1 verse 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. That when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. When it finish, bringeth forth death. Look what the Bible declares. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, thank God for the gift of God. Santa Claus cannot give you that gift because Santa Claus ain't nothing but the devil. Huh. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you, brother. Santa Claus means Satan want to grip you with his claws. That's what Santa Claus means. Santa Claus ain't nothing but Satan. Santa Claus cannot give you the gift of the Holy Ghost because Santa Claus ain't nothing but the devil. Come on. But Jesus can set you free from the devil's claws. Huh. Whoa, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. So it said here, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. The devil wants to entice you. Look how Samson was enticed by Delilah to find the secret of his great strength. Look, now look what the Bible said in Judges chapter uh, 16, verse 4. And Samson loved the woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Now, did the Bible ever say that Delilah loved Samson? No. Did the Bible ever say they was in love with each other? No. It just said Samson was in 
loved Delilah. It didn't say she loved him. Because if Delilah really loved Samson, she would never have set him up. Because love don't sex you up, love builds you up. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. The Bible said, the wise woman builds her house, but the foolish pulls it down with her hand. So we're asking God for a wife, ask God for a wise woman. We're asking God for a husband, ask God for a wise man. Now read the book of Proverbs 24, verse 25. No, Proverbs chapter 25, verse 24. It said, it's better for a man to be in the corner of a rooftop rather than deal with a brawling woman who like to fight. And that's the wrong one right there. Because now she want to pick fights and cause you to go to jail. Okay, I ain't supposed to shop in iron. You're supposed to bring the best out of each other, not the worst out of each other. Praise the Lord. To so ask God, say, Lord, deliver me from that lust. Set me free from the lust and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. If it fell like David, then just get back up and repent. That's a key word, repent. It means to turn away from sin with godly sorrow. Not just ask God forgiveness and then keep committing the same sin, then that's not repentance. If you're really sorry for what you did, you don't do it no more. If you tell your wife, honey, I'm sorry for cheating on you. I mean, she made me do it. No, she didn't. Lust was already conceived in your heart already, according to James chapter 1, verse 14. Stop blaming her and blame yourself and say, Lord, it's me, oh Lord, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Same thing with your women cheating on your husband. Okay, you got to look at yourself. We have to judge ourselves. Praise God. If you say to your wife, I'm sorry for cheating on you. If you're really sorry, then you don't do it no more. You don't go back to that same woman back to her apartment having sex all night and getting hickeys. And know your wife didn't give you a hickey. Can I, oh, come on, can I keep it real? Praise the Lord. So when you make a change, you don't go back to that woman no more and have an affair with her. And even vice versa, I have an affair with that man. I have an affair with your husband's brother. See, repent means to make a change. Stop. Turn away from sin with godly sorrow. That's what repent means. You don't tell your wife, well, I'm sorry for beating you up and you still beating her up. That means you're not repenting. If you're really sorry for abusing your wife, then you don't do it no more. That's what repent means. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Women, love your husband. Don't be a gold digger. Love your children. Do not protect your child and do not molest your child. Repent. Stop. Now, you must give that woman time to forgive you. Forgiveness is not always easy. Because now you don't betray her trust. She expected you to be faithful. He expected you, woman, to be faithful. Now, you're talking about, well, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. Okay, that, that don't sound sincere. That don't sound, I don't hear no sincerity in that sorryosity. Because now you expect her to get to take you back because you want to live off her welfare check and don't want to work and don't want to pay no child support. You live off her welfare check, pay the child support, be co-parents. But many of you just want to marry that woman for money. Are you marrying that man for money? But you don't want to stop your mess. So you don't just go telling her, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I made a mistake, okay? We all make mistakes. Take me back. No. She don't trust you. She don't trust you. Different between love and trust. The reason why... She's hurt because she loves you, but she don't trust you because you betrayed her trust. Now you must give her time to heal. Same thing. Give him time to heal. Now, some will never heal. Now, it's going to take God to heal you. It don't mean to keep going back to that woman or man because if they're not changing, they don't want to repent. Don't get your heart broke over and over. Jesus wants you to love yourself like you love others. That's why he said love thy neighbor as thyself. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to say a prayer of faith. Most of all, love Jesus more than you love anything. Me and my wife love each other, but we don't worship each other. My wife loves me, but she don't worship me. I love her, but I don't worship her. We love each other, but we love Jesus more than we love each other because God comes first. God said, I'm a jealous God. Thou shall not have no other God before me. If he's the one who delivered you, then he's the one who should be loved. He deserves to be loved. He deserves to be worshipped. Not just praise him to get a raise, but praise him because he deserved the praise. Huh? When the praises go up, the blessings come down. Whoa, hallelujah. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Huh? For it is the power of God and the salvation unto everyone that believes unto the Jew first and also to the Greek. God bless you.